Hello, this tutorial is directed to students in Xavier University's General Biology Laboratory, Fall Semester 2012 and beyond. This semester we're going to be making outlines as part of our homework, and I'm going to ask you to do them in the form of concept maps. And this tutorial will hopefully make it clear to you some of the formatting issues I would like um, you to be aware of, uh, as well as how to use the concept mapping software VIEW. Uh, I'm going to try to be complete in this and succinct, which is um, often conflicting uh, priorities. And I'm going to try to work uh, clockwise starting from up here. But first, the, the general formatting issues that I want you to observe in this class. Uh, first, one of the requirements is that you have all of the title headings and all of the keywords entered into your uh, outline. So I want you to make all of your titles into these yellow hexagons and all of your keywords in yellow ovals, uh, which is actually the default node uh, settings for view. Um, after that, if you have to add a heading that, to help organize any of your concepts, which I, I find you frequently do, um, but not always, please use a light blue oval for that purpose. And if you have to add your own content to make the map seem more complete uh, or just richer, uh, use a green oval so anything like it comes from lecture notes, something like that, or Wikipedia sounded interesting, go ahead and add that in with green. Um, I'll be looking for both of these two additions to your maps to um, assess how richly you understand the material and how well you see that it's all interconnected. Um, and finally, once you're done organizing everything, and I'll comment on how to organize things, I want you to copy in the student learning outcomes for this particular chapter from a separate view map and then connect them with a single curved line heavily weighted and orange um, to the single point within the concept map that you think is most illustrative of that uh, student learning outcome. Um, a couple other formatting things. Um, sometimes you'll have to use uh, colored arrows to help um, deconfuse messy nodes, so something like this where they're interconnected. Um, for that, make all the colors, um, make all the um, lines coming away from a single node the same color and increase their thickness to three pixels. And um, yeah, make them all the same color. Um, moreover, one of your goals is to add labels to describe the relationships between things. And the more you're able to do this, the more it's clear that you understand how those items are related, not just that they are related. Um, so let's see. Um, before we get started, I actually wanted to, to mention to you that you can download the view software, uh, just do a Google search for visual understanding environment, or else um, you can go to Blackboard and bring up my browser here. Just do that from the MyXU. Go into our course. Go into course content. Course links. And go to the view download page. And from here you'll have to enter an email address and a password. Uh, don't be shy about that. They won't harass you. This is actually run through uh, another university. So you'll be able to get it there. It's available on all platforms. The controls are extremely similar across those platforms. So if I reduce that and bring the software back, that's one thing. Um, so I'll just start the, the clockwise thing now. So you can add pictures if they're going to be helpful to your uh, concept map. And normally that's just a drag in from the desktop. There it is. Um, you can also add hyperlinks. So to do that, um, I'm a PC user, so I'm going to use right-click for a lot of these things. Um, you'll have to navigate to this if you're a Mac user. Add URL. You'll simply add it here, and it will create a note on the, on the side here. Um, so if, for example, I just took our, well, let's take the MyXU login page, add URL, copy that in, OK. Now, anytime you click on this area here, we'll open a new browser window for you. Okay, so to illustrate this idea to deconfuse messy connections, 
Um, what I'm going to do is start showing you some of the controls. Um, first, up here, the Select tool lets you manipulate any particular object um, by in any kind of motion you want, drag it around and so forth. The Node tool is how you create an, an oval or other shape. Um, take note of the formatting palette that I have open down here. Right now it's set to rectangle, here's oval, um, hexagon comes quickly after, and so forth. You can control the color that it's in it, the, the line that surrounds it, and so forth. Um, we don't actually want that node at the moment. Um, to connect items, start from where you want to start the arrow to point from, and drag it to where you want it to point to. Um, once you've completed that, you have the ability to enter the text. Finally, if you're really on a roll and you're just adding item after item, um, you can use the Rapid Profiling tool, which um, will create both a line and a descendant box like this, um, in which you can type in each of those independently. So, let's... Uh, move on here. So to illustrate this concept of cleaning up, like I said I was going to do, I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to grab every arrow that's coming away from this box. I'm going to change it to a red color and change the weight to three pixels and um, it's decided to be buggy on me. So first I'm going to change it back to one and then back to three and there. Now we have it and let's see so for one other one if I select now I'm hitting shift grab everything that's coming away from it and do the same let's just assume that it's going to be buggy this time and then change it to purple you can see that when things start crossing, it becomes clearer what belongs to what. Um, I'm going to hit this point now, too. You should arrange the nodes such that you'll minimize crossing over. So this is a bit of a mess, and it's actually a very avoidable mess. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this item here, drag him back down closer to the source where he's not crossing anything, and I'm going to move this guy out of the way closer to what he is actually connected to. So something like this makes it look a little bit tidier. Okay. Um, if you're adding nodes, say you want to add some independent information from lecture, uh, I'll show you two ways to do this, but um, to, to avoid uh, this thing where view will default to the last format used, so you notice down here it's green, when I click on something else that exists it'll adopt that format for the next item. So if I was stuck on yellow and I wanted to add my own item, I would click on a green one first, then add it. So my lecture note comes in here. I then connect it. I notice that this is OK. However, if I had already been using this one, it would be different. Um, anyway, let's see what happens here. Yeah, OK, so it's being goofy. So to avoid that, I'm going to hit the shortcut key S, grab the kind of line that I actually want, use the shortcut key L for line, and draw it back in. And I apologize, I'm being haunted by the previous line. So again, select, back to line, you'll notice it changing on the top title bar, and there I have that connection. Now that I've changed both of those, I could also have the, uh, use the rapid profiling tool and it would do the same um, without having to select different tools multiple times. Okay, so that's that. Um, now that we're over here, the panner window. So different palettes are available under window. The main ones that I keep open are formatting palette and panner. The panner you can mouse on here and come to any point in your map. Um, by dragging this around. It comes in handy as things get bigger. Um, so, let's see. 
um, let's see. So when I'm at the beginning of the semester, I'm going to give you um, files that contain all of the keywords and the titles um, already entered. And the keywords will only be associated with the actual um, uh, with the actual title. But what I want you to do is connect them concept conceptually to the things that are most relevant. And so a lot of times I told you you're going to have to add your own keyword here. So for example, in this is a description of all the, the shortcuts in view, and a lot of them have to do with arranging things. And these two, though they are about arrangement, they're specifically about what order the two items appear on the screen in front of each other and so forth. So conceptually, let me grab this format here, these mostly have to do with the z-axis position. And what I would have you do is modify from the documents that I give you or from the titles that they're associated with in your uh, lab book and use the more appropriate connections that you can come up with. So now both of these are descended from the z-axis position and in turn z-axis position still has to do with arrangement so we connect it like this. Um, I'll actually come to this point last after I cover a bit of the shortcuts so let's hit a couple of those. Shortcut keys are your friend. Shift is by and large the best one, the most relevant, the most times um, because you're, ob you're going to be grabbing multiple items multiple times throughout the, the arrangements. Um, so I covered these four that are on the menu bar already, um, but let me just generally arrange things on here and you'll get a sense of some of the arrangement shortcuts. So I'm going to grab each of these by holding down shift and clicking the, on them individually and I'm going to bring them into a single row by hitting Alt R. There they are. You'll notice that they're overlapping each other and so what I would want to do is distribute them along that whole axis evenly and that's this shortcut. Um, distribute horizontally Alt H. If they still overlap you can drag the outside edge of this and they'll be nice and neatly arranged um, according to that. Um, you may find that once you ha have a nice arrangement you may want to grab all the items in there and form a group and that you do by pressing control. Most of the controls on this, most of the shortcuts are actually from alt but this one is control, control G forms a group. Now I have a single item that I can move around and that helps if you're getting in the middle of something like this and you want to be able to select your specific group without selecting other things around it. Okay, um, some similar controls. Uh, distribute vertically and form columns. Um, here's the center into a column. So say I want to clean up all of my main formatting items here. I'm going to drag all these. Oops, I've accidentally selected this guy. I'm going to hold shift and get rid of him. Now I'm going to use the column shortcut which is Alt C. They're going to come into an arrangement. Um, I want them to be evenly distributed so I'm going to hit Alt V and there they are. And again if you don't like the spacing in between them you can drag like this or this. Um, and so we'll make them a bit more compact like that. Um, what have I forgotten here? Um, down here you can do similar operations. I'm going to grab these and you can align any particular edge. So if you want to align the top edge you hit Alt and Up. I'm going to undo. You can align the right edges. So this, 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 and this by pressing Alt Right and similarly with Alt Left and Alt Down. Um, I don't know that those actually have anything to do with each other, so before I sort them out I'm just going to leave them alone actually. And then there's um, two really important ones here. So um, this text is being obscured by this, so um, well, I know that that example is not going to work out, so I'm going to do it this way. This text is being obscured by this line, and I, as a general rule I want you to eliminate lines going over text. So I'm going to use the Alt-F to bring that box forward. Actually it's all the way to the front. Um, previously before I grouped this guy 
this text was obscuring this too. So, oh, there's the example. So I see that this line is actually a big, um, big bully in his neighborhood. So I'm going to send him all the way to the back and hit Alt B. And now he's not going to interfere with any of the different um, nodes around him. Um, and in and again, I will just emphasize that. I do want the nodes to appear on the front, if possible, so that everything is legible. Um, finally, I'll show you a little bit about the ultimate structure, but one note before that is about adding labels. So again, this will illustrate how well you understand the material. So bring him forward, because we don't want that that way. Um, and there's just two that I think could, could help you understand quickly. So. Um, Xavier University is an example of a university. So we can add an edge. An edge is another name for a line or a relationship. E.G., for example. A university, for example, XU. That's a clear relationship, as is any kind of declarative statement. Um, these can all be part of, or is a, as I have up here, or is a brother to, or so forth. Um, but in this case, we want to make a qualitative assessment. So XU is better than UC. So one thing I would have you note about that is you want to enter the text such that it will be read in the direction of the arrow. This statement is unambiguous because of the directionality of this arrow. So XU is better than UC and not the, the other way around. Okay, so finally, um, I just want to show you in general that I want the map organized as cleanly in a radial way or a hierarchical way as possible. So radial means it starts at the center and goes outward. Um, you'll find with concept maps that that can happen fairly frequently, but if you have a nice hierarchical relationship, um, that's nice to, it's a nice organization too. Um, so let me just take this mess here and try to untangle it for you as you watch, and then we'll see. We'll see if I can do that quickly. So you'll notice if you move an item around, kind of how many things are from it, how many things are going to it. So I see that this guy's actually pretty much on top. So I'm going to drag everybody that's underneath him into place. Okay, there's that. I see that their shortcut keys, and you'll notice it's a title format, is actually above arrangement. So there are shortcut keys that don't have to do with arranging things, like the menu bar that selects the tools. Um, this is a somewhat nebulous connection, but um, in that it doesn't have a higher order group, so he's just kind of hanging out, which is the kind of thing we want you to avoid. But on the other hand, it also helps you identify um, terms that are either there for a reason because we want you to know that one particular fact, or that just aren't that important because they're not linked to the rest of the, the lesson that we're trying to get across. Anyway, we can continue to organize. So this is another item from Arrangement. So when you distribute, this could more properly be a blue item. Um, it might look something like this. Typically, here, and this guy's down below, and that guy was just a note for myself. So we'll put him there. Um, typically when you're done, your um, the arrows in groups will start messing things up. So you'll, I would have you, when you're absolutely done, undo your groups, which is Control shift g and now you see that each of these is going to act independently. And so you see we went from a mess to something that's actually pretty understandable. I want you to use shortcut keys. There are different ones for accessing tools, for moving things around, for making groups and as a general practice you want to use shift and then the details follow from that. I hope this has been helpful and I hope you'll enjoy using Vue.